This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Question, you ever have like one of those days? That day would be today. So here's the deal. I've actually already filmed this entire video and then like a complete idiot, I came in and I deleted all the files. I reformatted the card before I downloaded my footage. I've only done this like once in like almost a thousand videos that I've made for this channel. And ironically, we're talking about inspiration. I'm not feeling that inspired all of a sudden. I'm going to share some viewer mail in this video, so I'm refilming it so you're not gonna get any of the wild unboxing that I normally do, which is probably just as well. I'm just gonna show you the work. And other than that little nugget, you're probably wondering, Ted, why am I telling you that I deleted all the footage? Well, the video is about inspiration, and I was actually just going to like redo it and do something different, but then I thought, well, the point I made in that video yesterday that I filmed actually has something to do with the little accident that occurred this morning. So I'm gonna to get to your work in just a second because there's actually some very inspiring stuff that I'm going to share in this video, but why am I talking about inspiration? Well, the last mail video I did, I was talking about the fundamental things that you need to have in place if you're going to go through life being an artist. And so one of those things, as I said, it's a long, tough road. You have to remain inspired. Now, I got a couple comments on that video and they made some good points. One of them was from my friend, Matt Beatty. Matt is an awesome printer. He does platinum palladium stuff. I've had him on these videos before. He's got this awesome studio out in Arizona. I'll link that video below. And also Matt does have a YouTube channel that he's doing now. And I'll link that as well. You should check it out if you're into film and printing and that kind of thing. So the comment was is that the idea of inspiration is great unless you actually have to get work done because you can't really rely on inspiration just to hit you at any given moment. Now, I do agree with that completely. And after reflecting on that a little bit, I thought, well, I think actually my thoughts on this have changed over the years. And that's what I want to clarify a little bit in this video. But first, this came from a guy named Kenneth who sent me a ton of prints that he made in his darkroom. They're, they're pretty awesome. And he sent them to me in probably the biggest package that I've ever gotten for a mail video. Either way, Kenneth writes, Hi Ted, I'm a massive fan of the show and I've been watching for a couple of years now. I hope you enjoy these prints. None of them are quote unquote perfect, but I feel like getting your work out there is the vital thing sometimes. In a sense, I see these prints as displaying progress and growth as I continue to hone the craft of creating good photos. Thanks again for the great videos and I look forward to your content in the future. So Kenneth has made notes on the back of each of these prints with settings and things like that. I'm not gonna go into these, but this is really nice. This is one of my favorites. I love this double exposure of the fire hydrant with the fire over the top. Really good work, Kenneth. I'm, I'm really excited about this. This is awesome. Which brings me to one of my points about inspiration. So I know this may sound corny and I don't want it to, but these are some of my favorite videos to make where I actually look at your work. I, I'm in a really interesting position where I get people that just mail stuff to me. It's really good, as you can see. This is one thing that inspires me. And that kind of inspiration makes me want to make more videos. It makes me want to create work and it, it just gets me excited. And that's what I wanna talk about with inspiration. So I think that inspiration comes in two different ways. So first of all, in the sense of creating art, of creating photography, the sense that you're making something, there's the idea that you're waiting for inspiration to hit. Now, when I was a lot younger, when I was starting out, that's one thing that would just kind of get me going is like, I didn't really know what to shoot. I kind of didn't know what I wanted to do. So I would just kind of wait for something to inspire me. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think also because of my music training, because that's what my degree's in and all that. Um, when I used to compose music, it was the same thing. There's two ways of doing it. There's sitting there and trying to work notes and chords out, or there's like, kind of waiting for inspiration to hit. It's not a bad thing, it's just unreliable if that's the case. Now the second form of inspiration, which is more of what I relate to in my life now, is just the act of trying to stay inspired in general. Now for me, I am inspired by photography. As you guys know, I've got a ton of photography books over here. I look at them daily, it's part of my ritual, and I love to see other people's work. However, the way that inspires me is very different, and it's just kind of, I guess age has something to do with this, but what I don't want to to do is see somebody that I love their work and then feel like I have to start emulating or copying that necessarily. I think when you're younger, that's fine, but that's a weird source of inspiration for me and I try not to let it affect me in that way. What works for me is stepping outside of the photography world. So stepping outside of photography becomes a completely different ballgame. That's where things get really interesting because you have to interpret it into the stuff that you're creating and during that interpretation process, it's liable to change from its original state. So I'll give you an example. So for instance, I mentioned music because that's kind of where I started out. 
I was a kid, I played guitar, and then I got into composition stuff, and I ended up majoring in music in college. So it's something that's still very special to me. There are similarities between photography and music, but they're very different. And I've talked about this before, but music largely is abstract. Okay, you have lyrics and you can understand those, and those are probably less abstract, but how do you explain middle C to somebody? Or how do you explain a G chord to somebody? It doesn't make a lot of sense unless you put it in some sort of context. But if you allow yourself to be inspired by music and start thinking about it in terms of form and structure and resolutions and what happens, the way it paces itself, and then those ideas can come into what you're doing with your photography, then that becomes very different. And you can do this with anything. For me, sometimes it's films. I'll get really obsessive about some director that I love their work and I want to see every movie they've ever made. Or it could be books, it could be literature, it could be something that you're just not familiar with that starts making you think. And that's a different source of inspiration and that's the one I was talking about in that previous video. That is inspiration that I generally can control in my life and it just has to do with what you're interested in in your free time when you're not working on photography. It's the other things. And having that inspiration is very key because if I go through a period where I don't have a connection with any kind of art form or literature or film or whatever that is, music, then I kind of start to feel flat and you're just doing the same thing every time. So that's why I say this is totally essential to the whole idea of being an artist. Along those lines, I want to share this inspiring little zine that came. This is called London's The Polycentric City. This comes to us from Luca who writes, Dear Ted, we recently completed London's, our first collective project featuring the work of eight photographers documenting a new perspective of London centers. We wanted to reach out to you and send you a copy. You can also find more information about the collective in this project on our website. I'll link that in the show description. Let us know what you think about this work. Hope you enjoy. Thanks, Luca. I normally do not provide critique on stuff that comes in, but one of the things that I find really inspiring about this is the way this zine is printed and treated as an object unto itself. There's a lot of really cool stuff going on. It's simple, but it's very effective. So I love the photography. I think the spreads are really cool. It's very well laid out, but I love the way that this is treated differently in that it's a book and you're going to view it in some kind of landscape orientation, depending on how you're looking at it but the typography runs the opposite direction. This provides a really interesting breakup and I love the crazy cover with the double flap insert here. This is really nicely done. Luca, you guys should be proud of this. It's amazing. So a few more thoughts on inspiration. I've got some more work to show, but real quick, I wanna give a shout out to our sponsor today who are the awesome folks over at Squarespace. I am actually redesigning my personal website right now and I'm going to be using Squarespace. So I've been sharing a lot of images with you guys in these videos. This is something that I want to share more of, be able to put links and things to when I have collections made. Squarespace is an awesome place to do that. It really is the easiest way to build a website. You can build an online portfolio. You can even build an e-commerce store on here. The tools have really gotten good. How easy is Squarespace to use? Well, you're gonna start with one of their award-winning templates. Now, all of these templates are customizable. Your content is separate from the template, so you can change the entire look. If you feel like you need a complete refresh or you're not sure on something, you can get things to look exactly like you want them. What good is a website if nobody's looking at it? Will Squarespace have the right social tools and email integrations in here so you can do your own website promotion as well? My favorite part of Squarespace, well, it's really intuitive. So if you can drag and drop a folder of images, you can build a photo gallery. It's that easy. You can easily go into the settings to customize everything to your liking, hook it up to your own domain. In fact, they sell those too, and you are in business. So head over to Squarespace using the link below this video, and you can try it out for absolutely free. And when you do decide that Squarespace is right for you, I can save you an additional 10% on your first order by using offer code AOP. So once again, offer code AOP. And I want to give a special shout out and thanks to the awesome folks at Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, I'm gonna give you an example of something that's inspiring me at the moment. Now, I'm not gonna play this for you. This is Spotify, because I'm not interested in the copyright strike today. Chopin Nocturnes. This is the Maurizio Pollini versions. There are several good ones, but this is a great place to start. Okay, so we've got music, that's an abstract. So where do we take this? Well, the easiest place to go is like Wikipedia. Start reading about the pieces. What are they? If you're not familiar, Chopin wrote 21 of these for solo piano between 1827, 1846. He actually popularized the idea of a nocturne. There's not a formal structure. It's not like a sonata or something like that. But the whole idea of the nocturne, it was a form that was developed by Irish composer John Field. Not as crazy about the field pieces, but it's interesting to see where the lineage is. These pieces were inspired by French opera arias. And so the key characteristic of a nocturne is very typically you have broken up chords in the left hand on the piano and on the right hand, you have an operatic melody of some kind. And there's a list of other composers that you can check out who were inspired to write nocturnes afterwards. People like Satie, 
Scriabin, Poulenc, Barber, Rachmaninoff, and Lowell Lieberman. So this led me to research further. Where does the word nocturne come from? Well, it just means it's music that evokes feelings of the night. And so this is loosely interpreted, but there's a Bela Bartok nocturne that actually tries to replicate sounds of the night, like frogs and crickets. It's very weird, but very cool. But back to the Chopin nocturne. So what's going on in these? We have these broken chords in the left hand. That just means they're broken up rhythmically. So wait a minute, that can be inspiring because, okay, well, the information that we give in a photograph is very different than the way that music is presented because there's a time element. But is there an inspiration that can come for a way that that could be represented where you have something that's less abstract that's delivered in pieces? So, you know, I'm, what I'm saying is that I don't know if this is the right answer, but you're looking for things that you can start thinking of new creative directions with. And of course, you're loving the music, hopefully the whole time. That's what gets inspiring about these things. Speaking of abstract, that brings me to this next book that I got. This comes to us from Angelo Dragon. This is a really cool book of his abstract light studies that goes on. And he writes to me, Dear Ted, love your show. This is my first photo book. And I had a lot of fun working on this project. Hope it will bring you some joy too. Angelo, this is a really nice book. You should be very proud of it. I love the continuity to it. I love the experimentation. I love the abstraction. Nice work, my friend. So this book comes to us from a gentleman named Brett Bell. And Brett writes in here, Dear Ted, I hope this letter finds you well. I am a photographer based in the Canadian prairies. And I'm writing today to show you my my publication of my first zine, Still Life. The process of creating this zine, from learning how to develop my own film, to sequencing the images, to holding the first printed copy in my hands, has been an experience filled with joy. The creative control that I've permitted myself, allowing myself to learn, experiment, fail, and try again, has ultimately provided me with a new agency in my work that I did not know that I needed. I'm going to repeat that. That's kind of mind-blowingly important. The creative control that I've permitted myself, allowing myself to learn, experiment, fail, and try again, has ultimately provided me a new agency in my work that I didn't know I needed. Brett, this is an outstanding book. You should be very proud of this. Nice work. And I love that whole idea of permission to fail. I'll give you an example. I failed pretty hard yesterday when I filmed this entire video. And and then I had to decide whether or not I had the energy to do it again. I'm glad I did because it actually came out as a better video today. If you guys like this kind of approach where we open mail and have a topic to talk about, let me know in the comments, maybe something you'd like to see. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until then, later.